What's going on everybody? My name is Kevin and welcome to the 2023 International Rod Builders Challenge winner announcement. I am joined as always with the one and only Don Morris. What's up? Hope everybody's doing okay. We're a little bit lively right now because we are streaming on Instagram and if you want to see a little bit of the behind the scenes, we are going live on there. So let's talk about this year's competition. For this one- This is the International Rod Building Challenge 2023. It's nuts. It was crazy. We had the most rods turned in ever. I was actually impressed. So I, I'm hoping I got these numbers right, but over 110 blanks went out. Yep. We have 14 different countries. 14 so different more countries, countries than we've ever had it. Yep. So truly an international competition, which is funny because one of the 10 finalists, or two of the 10 finalists, we have the UK and we have Belgium. Correct. So very cool there. Um, the 10 finalists were picked at ICRBE. If you guys don't know what ICRBE is, it is the International Custom Rod Builders Expo. Uh, Don was there and it was pretty cool. Tell us a little bit about kind of that situation. Yeah, so the uh, expo is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina every year. Um, and this was the uh, 19th year, I think it was. And we have been there for all of them. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, the only custom rod builders show of its kind anywhere in the world. Um, and just thousands of rod builders coming through the doors. Uh, I mean, getting their eyes on, you know, eyes on new product, getting to meet the people that they talk to every day. It's awesome. Cause I get to see people that I've never seen in person and, um, you know, talking to them and finally seeing them on the other side, not just hearing their voice on the phone. Um, but we had uh, the display, we had 38 rods turned in and we had them all on display at the show. Um, and they all got lots of fingerprints on them. So hopefully nobody commits a crime. Now I will say I was not able to go to ICRBE this year, which was very sad for me because I really wanted to see all of the rods because we had a separate booth. We moved the International Rod Building Challenge out of the American Tackle booth into its own area uh, to be able to display these rods. Guys could come in and look at them, check them out and, and kind of go through them to see some amazing rod builds. I got back and the top 10 had already been picked and going through these and we're gonna do a little bit of a tighter look on those, they're amazing. So speaking of which, let's take a really quick look at the 10 finalists rods. So that was just a really quick look at the top 10 finalists. Um, these, all these builds are different. And so just so you guys understand, here is the blank. Uh, we don't really know any information Careful. on this blank. This is all done by Don in secret. And one really cool thing that I'm actually really proud about at this event and Don has been very, very stubborn about is the secrecy of how this is done, how we make sure there is no influence whatsoever over this. So everybody got this blank. You probably see a fly rod, you see a short and <laughs> casting rod, like it, people, you know, rod builders in general are some of the most creative people out there. So let's talk a little bit about this. There are no two components. There's no, there's no double. There's no doubles. Everybody has different guides and everybody has different reel seats. Everybody has different grips. Um, the only thing the same about any of these rods is the blank. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing about this. So this blank is not an American tech, a normal American tackle blank. It was made just for this contest. Cause we don't sell this blank. We don't sell this blank at all. Nope. So but, nobody had a heads up on it. But if you want one of these, there were some leftovers that the guys at HFF got. So HFF custom rods has the leftovers on these. And I can tell you, Mark Kraus, who is arguably legend. one of the best in the Absolute world. Absolute legend. Absolutely. He got his hands on this and was blown away at the blank. So grab one from those guys if you can. Because this is 
this is the only year it's going to be made. That's it. Next year, I'm already working on the one for next year. It's going to be completely different. So, can we tell them two piece, one piece? Nope. See, it's gonna, well, it's gonna this be is the beauty. It's going to be multi piece, just so we can ship it okay. all over the world. Um, one piece or super hard to ship, so it will be multi piece. Um, it will be two, three, four, five, six. I, it's going to be. If multi-piece. you make a seven piece rod. It's gonna be nuts. Yeah, it's, not it's a lot of feral rats. It's, not gonna be seven it's a lot of feral rats. But it will be a multi-piece rod. Uh, what we're talking about is the differences in these. Um, the first one he showed was cork marbling and a thread wrap. This one stabilized wood and feather inlay. So everybody's using a different technique, but on the same blank, and they can compete with each other with their different techniques. And but then it's but even still, like you would think of custom rod builders do a lot of wood, a lot of cork, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But then you get something like this rod. <laughs> where he actually, it's, he actually used a uh, lady stocking material over yeah. a foam core for his handles. If you guys weren't able to see this, this is the Banksy rod. Uh, it's after the artist Banksy. Um, there's a really amazing inlay up here. I wish I could show you guys the tighter shot. Um, we will work on that for next time. We'll have pictures of all these. Yeah, all the pictures will be coming out in uh, next week where we'll have detailed photos of all of these rods to showcase this. And then of course, out of that simple two piece, you have this four piece, uh, eight weight fly rod. Yeah. It, you know, really cool, done like a, I think it's a race car, correct? Uh, it, it, a, a classic car. So it's got like pinstriping like a classic car. Um, he just, he went all out with it. I mean, the wooden steering wheel look, uh, just- The V8 cool cut colors. into the, the uh, real seat. Into the, into the false ivory, amazing. It's, it, this is the coolest thing. Like it's, every year I get, I, I, you know, you've been doing this for years now, but every year we get, even better every single time. These are by time. far the judges. We had some of the same judges this year as we have in the last couple of years, and they said that these are the best ones they've seen. So good job, everybody. All right. Hey, what should we, you know, should another we thing start? I didn't mention about this is hmm. you can see the letters on here. Oh yeah. Um, so nobody in this building and none of the judges, except for one person, who, knew who would that who be done? belong to. So that's one of the things that we've done to make sure that the judges have no clue. And it and it's it, and it goes even for we take it even further than that to keep the anonymity as clear. There's that's no favoritism. It is anonymity. An- 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 I almost had it wrong. An enemy. An enemy. An enemy. So just so you guys understand, as far as the influence of American Tackle on this contest, there is none. Um, one of the biggest things that we do is Don and I work on this contest mostly. Don, I do a little bit here just when it comes to the judging side. But the main part of this is the rods will come in. Don will actually accept those rods. He knows whose rods are which, but Don no longer has the ability to do any of the judging. He doesn't do any of the picking for the top 10. He doesn't do any of the write-ups or anything like that. He takes all of the names out of it. And then he tells me, okay, here are your top 10. I work with the judges. I have no idea who these people are. I don't know which builder is which. So for me, I can stay extremely neutral when a judge asks me a question, because the only reason I am sitting in there to help the judges is if they have a question on a clarification of a idea, a rule, Um, and our judges are from all over. It's, we have rod builders, we have media, we have industry. We had our first, uh, we had our first international judge. Yep, we did. We had Nuno Polino from Portugal. also an outstanding rod builder. And this was another thing that we changed up this year specifically was there were five judges that were done at ICRBE. And again, to keep this as neutral as humanly possible, Mark Krauss, mm-hmm. Nuno Polino, yep. uh, Bill Faulkner, who is the owner of oh, Angler's okay. Resources. So in reality, a competitor of ours. Okay. We wanted to make sure okay. that we still involve this. Uh, Steve from HFF. Yep. Steve Haywood from HFF. And then we also had Tom Kirkman, who runs the International Rod Builders Expo, International Custom Rod Builders Expo, along with the magazine. So those five are all very well respected rod builders in their own right. And then when we came back here, it was people like uh, Phil Wolf, who is a editor and owner of Coastal Angler. So we wanted to have some media people in there. We had uh, Brad and his dad, Dave Reddington, come in who look at custom rods from a production standpoint. They do a little bit more than just your standard uh, rods. So Brad does a lot of custom rod work mm-hmm. and Dave does as well. Uh, but Dave is the founder of Reddington Fly Rods back in the day. Yep. Uh, we had Sid Dobrin, who is a uh, contributing editor and a writer for multiple fishing magazines. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Darren Hine. And the reason we do this is Darren has over 40 years in the industry. He is, one of, he is our vice president here at American Tackle. 
But again, he knows he doesn't know anybody that's in there. I treat him just like another judge. There's no information Probably given. Worse than normal judge. Probably just yeah. a little bit. Um, but overall, it's judged as neutral as possible. And a real quick, we had we had uh, we had Brooks, the uh, manager of Mudhole. He's the president of Mudhole. President of Mudhole. Sorry, sorry. Tied in. Tied in. He's the he's the lead instructor instructor over at Mudhole. Man, we had a lot of really big judges. A lot of big judges. So really quick, just so you guys also know, you guys can see more of this information on our website about the International Rod Building Challenge. But to run through the eleven categories, rod and this is a scale of one to ten. You had rod functionality. Uh, rod's overall appearance, guide placement, complete alignment, that includes seal uh, seats straight with guides, seats not offset, grip straight, butt straight, uh, guide straightness, thread work, finish application, cleanliness, fit and finish, design, and handle design. A lot of this is functionality. Yeah. A lot of this is what we would do every day when we're building rods for a customer, for a friend, for whatever reason. So it takes the normal rod builders information and just takes it that much more so there was 110 points possible from each judge yep. so uh yeah it's good stuff all right I th we're only 15 minutes and i think everybody's gonna get really mad if we don't start we don't announcing start. the way right. so i love how we did that at that the exact great. same yeah, time that was beautiful yeah, so we're gonna start with third place so in third place by the way Oh, he does it every time. Only eight and a half points away from first place. And the reason there's a half a point is we don't tell the judges they can't judge half points. True. This is the first year we actually had a judge on one of the categories scored something a nine and a half because it wasn't absolutely perfect, but he couldn't give it a nine. He couldn't give it a ten. It so it was. Oh. But that half point is all that separates first and second. It's kind of crazy. That is crazy. So, but. Eight points out of first. So, in third is Rod Q. Gary Allner for the United States. That was one of the ones we just showed. Uh, Rod Q, congratulations, Gary. Absolutely. I'm sorry, no, I, I Gary Pugh. Is that his name? Yeah, you said Gary Pugh. Okay. Oh, wait, Gary Pugh. No. Yeah, it's Pugh. Gary Pugh. Gary Pugh. Sorry, Gary Pugh. Third place. This is the stabilized wood. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Good job. Really nice. I mean, you want to talk about craftsmanship, and again, we'll have detailed photos of this, but the handle alone and the work that had to be done for the handle, for the feather inlays, for the guide wraps, everything, this rod is stunning. Absolutely so, beautiful. congratulations, Gary. Well deserved. So, Gary has a trophy coming at him and a $500 gift certificate for American Time. All right. Second place. In second place, we also have. from the USA. Our very first lady in the top three, Stephanie Adderhold. So Stephanie did a bunch of cork work here, um, thread wraps, marbling, just absolutely beautiful. And the, work. the techniques, the, the different techniques, but while still keeping this very symmetrical, very on color brand from you know, the saw blade stuff up at the uh, stripper guide to the cross wraps to the marbling techniques. Absolutely beautiful rod. Stephanie you should be extremely proud of yourself and it's very well deserved for second place. Absolutely. Congratulations. So we, again, we got a trophy for Stephanie and $750. All right, so, so first place. Half a point from second it, to uh, first. <laughs> it's, this is the tightest, I think this is the tightest final 10 overall ever than there ever has been. And, yeah. and we're talking even before my new even changes. Before, even before American Tackle took this over, a um, half a point is all separated first and second. So all right. first place. The winner and but. Oh. So first place also got third place last year. So he moved up a little bit. Gary Allner from the UK. Congratulations, Gary. And that is rod number e, e, right? Rod letter E, I guess. This, from sitting in with the judges, was very well thought out. Every judge thought the functionality of the rod, as, as artistic as the rod is, functional, the Absolutely. weight distribution, how the guides are laid out, it was, it's a knockout of the park. So he, not only did he paint it a you know cool metallic color, but he also did a tartan wrap, a tiger wrap, and they actually blend one over the other underneath the real seat. Um, so just 
you know, custom cord. There's, I mean, Gary went all out on this thing. He even has a tiger wrap for this stripper guy. I don't understand that. Yeah. I, well, again, you guys will see the detailed photos of this, but that tiger wrap on the stripper guy to have as much movement as it has and that short of a distance yeah. is in and of itself amazing. You knocked so, it out of the park. So congratulations, Gary. You have a huge trophy that will cost about $350 to ship to the UK. Yep. You got $1,500 credit towards American Tackle, and you get to brag for the next year that you are the best rod builder in the world. In the world. So again, everybody, thank you so much for participating in this. If it's your, if you are interested in participating, please stay tuned. Join our Facebook group, the International Rod Builders Challenge. We will post updates on all of that. That's also where we're going to be posting our photos. Uh, we'll be posting on our main social media channels as well, but. Stay tuned, normally around right after iCast, we really start to dig into the competition. So keep your eyes peeled on that. If you are hesitant about doing this competition, I would tell you not to be, because there were rods that were submitted that they were like the first, first time, builder. Yeah, first time yeah. builder, like fourth rod they've ever made and got really high marks from a lot of people. Challenge yourself, that's the biggest thing. And like, even if, if you don't think you can win, just challenge yourself, do the best you can. I mean, why not? Um, and if you want, to come, want us to critique them for you, we'll go through a score sheet and give you some ideas on what you can improve on. So, so until next year. Until next, well, we'll be, <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing a lot more. So. <laughs> but again, thank you so much to the wonderful community of rod builders for supporting all of this, for the rod builders that submitted rods, and for all you lovely people on our lives. We really do appreciate you guys. My name is Kevin. This is Don Morris, and we'll see you next time.